Welcome to the Pain Points Podcast. We enjoy telling the stories of everyday people, whether that be small business owners, entrepreneurs, or people with a passion for their community. We want to highlight them and give them a platform to share their story. So grab your favorite beverage and join us on today's episode where we tell the story of someone just like you. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. Today we are here with Melody Davis of Melody's Macarons, right? I always want to say macaroons when I know that's not right because it's a completely different thing. But um, yeah, I never, I always, in my brain's like macarons. But yes, so welcome Melody. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me today. Um, Melody owns a beautiful little bakery that operates out of the Lufkin Mall and also has a stand at the Farmer's Market. No longer at the Farmer's Market. Couldn't keep up both. I have bad info. I have outdated info is what it is. Um, That's, so yeah, that's, that's a lot. Two locations. I stretched a little too thin. Yeah, yeah. But you started at the Farmer's Market. I did in February of last year. Oh, wow. Yeah, cool. So what, like, what made you want to, like, take on an actual, like, physical brick and mortar location versus, say, you know, like, the fairs or farmer's markets? It's a big hassle to go to farmer's markets and fairs and pop-ups. And it's, I needed a commercial commercial kitchen space, Mm -hmm. too, because in Texas, once you start selling beyond a certain point, you're no longer allowed to operate out of your home. You have to have a commercial kitchen with licenses and food manager certification and that kind of thing. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I would imagine if you're someone who is a baker or cooks any kind of, um, any part of your product that you're selling, that going to a farmer's market or a pop-up or a, a a market day is downtown thing um that's a lot of work to do ahead of time that's a lot of preparation <laughs> it all up yeah. take it set it up all nice and pretty for people to buy it um having a, your own store has got to be you know a lot easier in some respects but also has its challenges i'm sure that we'll get into in a little bit but let's before we get into all of the you know nitty-gritty business stuff why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and who you are and all the fun things that make you you. Well, I'm 38 years old. I have two children. I'm married. Uh, I'm originally from Nacogdoches. Um, we won't hold that against you. <laughs> thanks. Appreciate <laughs> it. Um, my mom is from Brazil, and my dad is also from Nacogdoches, like okay. me. I've spent my whole life here. I went to SFA. got a degree in communications. Um, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Cool. So did you always... I'm guessing your degree was was not in you know um, commercial baking, <laughs> no, <it laughs> or culinary uh, pursuits. Um, what no, what com- did you originally go to school for? Um, just commu- business communications. Yeah, I had run a business in Nacogdoches before, a computer store and a hair salon, and I like being my own boss. Um, yeah. So I was looking for something to do that I could be my own boss more long term. So baking, was that just a hobby that you had? It was. During all of that and just sort of like, you would take your delicious treats to, I'm sure, family functions and people were like, oh, you should sell these. Yeah. Because that's usually how something like that yeah, starts. like, oh my gosh, how did you do so this? Good. You can't buy them anywhere around here. You really I can't. kept hearing yeah, a lot. Yeah, you can't. I mean, yeah. there are very few of all the, the bakery type places that I can think of, them, very few of them make and 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 from what I can see when I've been online and I see like little reels on Instagram or TikToks of people making macarons um it looks like it has to be so precise I'm sure it's probably easier than it looks but you know putting the batter on those little circles (laughs) and then making sure they you know bake perfectly symmetrical I don't know I think there's an art to it and I I, you know there's you see those memes that say expectation and reality my expectation would be that I would make these perfect cookies and then they would look like some hot mess that a toddler did so (laughs) I get a lot of people that come to me and say I think I can do this I'm going to give it a try and then they come back next week and buy a dozen and they're like nope yep never again I've heard that it takes a long time to practice and perfect it and then once you do it's very easy but that learning curve is a bit of a 
hurdle. There's just a lot of variables and they're very finicky. Something like the weather today can ruin every batch I make for the rest of the day because of the humidity and the products that I use and the age of the almond flour. And there's a lot of variables. They're very finicky cookies. Yes. Do you offer other goods besides macarons? We've got regular cookies. We've got some sugar-free cookies. And we're thinking about going into food, but... Because there's not many food options in the mall. There's just two food options besides me. So I don't know if we're going to cross that bridge. We we're used to have a it. pretty big food court at the Lufkin Mall. And I say big, big for how big the mall was. Um, and then it seemed like one by one, just all the little eateries sort of disappeared. And it was just nothing but clothing or boutique shops. So it would be nice to have, you know, other options. Although I'll, I will admit I don't go to the mall very often especially since COVID, but you know, um, and I keep trying to go to your shop and every day I think to go is on a Monday when you guys are Sorry, (laughs) we're recovering from the weekend. It's the one day we're closed. No, I I totally understand. And you should totally be closed. It's just every time I think to go up there, it's always after one of our recordings. Oh, I'll I'll swing by, say hello, get some stuff. And then it's like, oh, they're not open on Monday. It's the (laughs) Chick-fil-A paradox. (laughs) Yes, it is. Indeed it is. Um, So you live here in Lufkin or do you have an Yes, I live in Lufkin. I just bought a house in October here. So here for a while. Putting down some roots. Good deal. Where did your husband, you and your husband meet? College or? Uh, no. Met him later on in life. I've been married twice. My first husband I was married to for 15 years, and my second husband I met in Nacogdoches. He was working for Elliott Electric. Oh, okay. Good deal. Uh, and your kids are how old? My son Ethan is 11, and my daughter Vivian is 9. He goes to the middle school now, and she oh. goes to Brandon. Fun. Fun ages. You're on the precipice. This is like the one little spot where you, it's they're not over toddlers. it's over they're oh. not kids anymore yeah, they're not kids but then they're not teenagers <clears throat> either yet my daughter thinks she is <laughs> oh good yeah yeah good luck yeah <laughs> so you grew up in Nacogdoches which for those who are listening or are familiar with us that's just the town over um I actually live there uh, in elementary school and then went to college at SFA as well so um y- was baking like a big part of your childhood like I know for me growing up my grandmother taught me how to make all kinds of things and baking was like her favorite thing like cooking was yeah that was like you just had to cook because you had to eat but baking was like the thing that like was very special and she'd pull out all these special things and ingredients and special baking dishes and pans and we would make you know when I would spend summers or, or weekends with them um it was always the time where she'd make a point to like, okay, we're going to make my famous fudge or we're going to make, you know, these Neiman Marcus cookies or this, this other recipe. So I don't know. Was that the same for you? No, no. My mom's from Brazil. <laughs> they don't do traditional American desserts. Okay. Um, she did a lot of Brazilian cooking and I grew up with that, but no, baking has never been a big part of my life. What's, what's the difference then per, from Brazilian typical desserts versus American desserts? A lot less sweet. Yes. They use farinha in a lot of their, in yucca root in a lot Mm -hmm. of their desserts, and tapioca, but not a lot of chocolate. They use a lot of fruit, um, fresh fruit. Probably healthier for everybody. Probably. (laughs) But typically a lot less sweet than American or French desserts. Cooking, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you started this business because... Because people were saying you should, you know, nobody makes these around here and these are so good? Or was there like a thing formulating in the back of your brain for a while? Like, okay, I like running my own business. I like being my own boss and I like baking. I might as well put those two things together. Well, it was kind of a spite deal. Um, if I hope my mom doesn't watch this. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but no. um, she, know, she knew I had made them before and she liked them and I decided I'm going to make some of these for Valentine's Day and see how it goes and see what happens. I had another job. I was a property manager and I was really starting to hate it because COVID had started and Mm -hmm. having to evict people. But I made some and she said, okay, I want this many hundred and I'm going to give them to my friends. And I'm like, oh, that'll be $200 or $2 a piece. And she said, that's insane. Nobody's going to pay $2 a piece for one of those cookies. And I was like, that's on the cheap end. And So, yeah, she was my motivator. I mean, hey, sometimes it's the, I hate to say more negative comments, but, you know, uh, that kind of push us 
Uh, you know, you, people can praise you all day long, but what really motivates you is sometimes being like, hey, I can do that. Yeah. Don't tell me I can't, you know, and then you go out and prove them wrong. I think that's how a lot of people get their start. So, um, you know, running a business, especially one where you're you dealing with food and perishables and all that kind of stuff um, can be very challenging and stressful. Uh, is there anything that you do daily that kind of just puts you in a good frame of mind, sets you up for a successful day or successful week? Is there a, a, a routine or a ritual that you do that, that sort of aids in that? I like to get on TikTok and look at what other bakers have made. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of my inspiration. Like, oh, that, that flavor looks really great. I'm going to give that a shot this week or today and just find inspiration every yes, day from what other people do I mean that's I feel like that's that's some good advice actually because especially in your business I imagine that there's a certain um foundation and formula you start with okay we've got our signature cookie flavor or whatever but then you know if you uh, want to scale a business or you want to grow you always have to kind of be thinking of new things or seasonal flavors or absolutely all the things that you know go along with something like that so I think that's that's kind of that's nice like Things that inspire you, what other people are doing on, you know, people really like to put down TikTok. I, I actually really enjoy it. I, I don't know what side of TikTok some of these people are on. You've definitely screwed up your algorithm somehow <laughs> because I hear lots of horror stories. But I'm like, I just see the funny pet videos and the cool art videos and the, you know, um, snarky, you know, comeback kind of videos where there's not anything bad in them, you know, um, or my, my TikTok videos involve like me building Lego sets or something with my kid, you know, <laughs> something really nerdy or playing a video game, you know, things like that. And I, I like that idea of starting your day, getting on and finding inspiration in what other people are doing and then taking that and somehow applying it to whatever you're doing that day. So I, it helps me see their method, what maybe they're doing differently that I should be doing, um, what theirs look like, what colors, what flavor combinations. It it helps keep my creativity going to see what other people are doing. I feel like that's a good point to make because, you know, a lot of people like, we, you know, we owned Stampipe Coffee House and, oh, well, there's so and so's going to open a coffee shop. Aren't you scared? And I was like, no, competition breeds more success, you know, because then you're kind of, what are they doing? What are we doing? You know, back and forth sort of exchange to make your product and your place better. So taking other people's TikTok videos and using them as inspiration just, you know, I think elevates the entire industry you're in when everybody's kind of like sharing information and trying to do better. You know? uh, I'm in a couple of Facebook groups that are people that make specifically macarons just like me, and they're all very helpful, and we don't, we share our recipes, we're not secretive with it, and give mm-hmm. each other advice, like I'm having this problem my feet are too tiny and what can I do to do that and it's a hundred comments on these are the different things that you could you should try there's no gatekeeping yeah there's no reason to do that yeah I mean that's that's great not all industries are like that (laughs) um do you have anybody on TikTok or anywhere else that inspires you uh is there is there anything specific in the who or the what well when I got started doing this, there's uh, Michelle, I think her last name is Adams, Michelle's Macarons. She was in Ohio. She has the Facebook page and the TikTok and the Instagram, and she sells courses on how to get started making your own macaron business, but it's mainly for at-home bakers, not okay. brick-and-mortar stores, and she was kind of my go-to inspiration and guru, and I joined her class, and she actually talks to you gives classes one-on-one every week and answers your questions there's the main group for the non-paying members and then the group for the paying members where you get one-on-one with her okay I would never have thought that there was something like that on the internet so you learn something new every day very cool do you have any hobbies or things that you like to do when you're not baking rest Rest. sleep (laughs) sleep yes I think that is a hobby I don't think of that often enough as an answer, but yeah, I would imagine. Catching up on shows and just trying to relax. Is Monday your only day off? I actually work on Monday. Oh. I don't have a day off yet. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, business owner. I took two days off Christmas Day and the day after Christmas. Wow. That's it? Yeah. I mean. But I'm not working 12 hours a day now. I'm only working about five to six hours a day. I've hired other people to help me. Yeah. Letting go. Be 
being OCD and a control freak is really difficult, especially when you're making a finicky product yep. to trust somebody else. But I've got two great bakers that are helping me out. One is just learning. He's not all the way there. And one is a personal friend of mine that I grew up with and he's taken to it amazingly. His name is Ted. And I can just say, I need these flavors made today. Today is you're, you're getting these done and he can do it all by himself. He's wow. been working for me for, for about four months now okay yeah hiring people can be real tricky and scary when you're a business owner <clears throat> and uh but the thing is is if you take that leap and you've hired the right people it means less work for you so um it, it's i'm trying to back away less <laughs> hover over people less it's hard it's yeah. very hard to do um okay so let's do this little the section of the interview that we do where we call it rapid fire questions where we kind of just ask you questions and you answer the first thing that comes to mind and it kind of gives everybody a little like scope into your personality okay um we did this in our sound no check. pressure no <laughs> chat no no pressure at all oh uh, we did this question during our sound check but what did you have for breakfast caffeine and nicotine <laughs> <laughs> how do you take your coffee um I have a really sweet Starbucks frappuccino, espresso frappuccino with two shots of blonde uh, espresso whipped cream and cinnamon on the top. Nice cinnamon. Uh, what's your favorite song right now? Mm. FKA Twigs and featuring The Weeknd, Tears in the Club. Good deal. Um, are you currently watching a TV show? And if so, which one? Uh, just finished a docudrama on Netflix about Rasputin. And the um, the monarchy, Nicholas the Second. Okay, and I'll have to check the that out. Fall of the the last czar. That's okay, what it's called. Nice. I like that kind of thing. Um, what is your favorite book? Circe. Okay, it's a Greek mythology book. Okay. Um, favorite flavor of ice cream? Mint chocolate chip. Coke or Pepsi? Neither. Uh, <laughs> sweet or salty? <laughs> Salty. Beach or mountains? Mountains. What's your zodiac sign? Virgo. Uh, spring, summer, fall, or winter? Fall. Introvert or extrovert? Somewhere in between. The older I get, the more introvert I get. That's my answer, too. Uh, favorite color? Green. Is a hot dog a sandwich? Technically, yes. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite social media platform? TikTok right now. Agreed. Reddit uh, Reddit and TikTok are my two favorites. Yeah. Yeah. Um okay. Well, that was fun. Um when you started your business, uh you started out at the farmers market. I'm guessing it was a little bit slower than it wasn't quite the the what it is today. I mean, you were working out of your home using, you know, here in Texas you can do the home kitchen permit thing I'm, I'm there's sure. actually no permit oh you don't have to do anything oh I thought you had to at least have some sort of piece of paper saying you, you do were not. certified no well, that's a little scary actually yeah oh. <laughs> <laughs> because there are lots of other people that make food that sell it at the farmer's market and just keep that in mind um good to know I will definitely um have that in the back of my head um when you so when you were starting out you know uh, versus now uh, what are some of the differences from in the beginning to, to today? I didn't know what I was doing in the beginning. I was pretty much flying by the seat of my pants. Um, I had no idea what to expect. The first weekend that I worked was Valentine's and I didn't expect a lot, but I actually sold quite a lot of macarons because nobody does it. They're pretty for Valentine's Day. Um, they taste good. Yeah. They're they taste, they're all right. Um, <laughs> they're all right. <laughs> But then the next couple of weekends was Snowmageddon, and I yeah. still went to the farmer's market, and there was nobody there, really. So that was kind of a bummer. But then the following weekends, people started to know I was there. And Easter, I sold out within a couple of hours. Actually, yeah, by 12 o'clock, I was completely sold out. And it just kept growing and growing, you know, doubling every month the quantity that I was making. And it was getting harder and harder until I couldn't do my other job. Mm -hmm. But... I kept doing both. I went to work in Nacogdoches um, about 9 o'clock every morning, finished around 2, picked up my kids, came home and baked until 12, 1 o'clock in the morning every day. Oh, wow. That and, is a lot. And then Saturdays, be up at 6 to be at the farmer's market by 7. 
work yeah. all day Saturday and Sunday would be my day off. I'd just crash and sleep. Yeah. Oh gosh. After a week like that, I totally would too. Um, wow. Yeah. That's a lot. It uh, was it, harder to be able to do that in the beginning, working two jobs plus being mom. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think that anybody, whenever you're starting a business, a lot of people do what you did is they keep their, you know, nine to five job, you know, quote, quote. Mm -hmm. and, and that way they, they know they have a steady income and they're doing this other business on all the other, you know, free time wedges that they have. And, you know, that I think that right there, that that sort of thing separates the people who are serious and those who aren't because it takes a lot of effort and a lot of sacrifice, you know, time from your family, personal time, uh, sleep <laughs> to work two jobs, basically two full time jobs and 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 get away with that uh, without completely crashing or burning out. Was there anything that you did mentally to kind of go, OK, this it won't be like this forever? Because I know that for me, if I had operated that way for a certain period of time, I'd just be like, oh, I got it. One thing's got to give, you know. So what did you do during that time where you were just like basically just chugging it out? Well, I knew that I wouldn't be at my nine to five forever. And um, I just kind of took it day by day. Like if I can get through today yeah. and go to sleep tonight. I can do this again tomorrow and then it became week by week like I've got to make this many thousand macarons for this weekend and I just got to get through that and trying to plan things out plan my time out better yeah it's kind of like the, the adage what is it um how do you eat a, an entire elephant one bite at a time basically mm -hmm. so I mean that's a pretty good way to look at it because otherwise you can really overwhelm yourself uh my it, goal was just to get enough business going that I could quit my job and it replace my job. And I knew once I did that, I would get some relief from my nine to five, not having to do that. Yeah. Yeah. That definitely frees up some, some needed time. Whenever you're starting a business like this particular one where you have, you know, uh, ingredients and things you have to buy, was, was there, was there a lot of help in your Facebook groups and from Michelle, um, who you've referenced earlier, that help you sort of calculate how much you're going to need and what to plan for because to me that's always the big thing inventory and and making sure you don't make so much that it goes bad or it's not good but not making so little that you short yourself on some sales so where's the sweet spot there there it's just <laughs> flying by the seat of my pants that's how I do everything like gotcha. I, I think this weekend is going to be a holiday so I think I'm going to need twice as much as I would normally have on a regular week or weekend uh-huh um, but I've, it's still not enough. Even since I've moved into the store, I'm trying to prepare for Thanksgiving or for Christmas or for Valentine's day, I'm thinking we're going to need this many thousand and I've been short every time. Thousand? Yeah. Oh, that <laughs> just seems like so much. And these are all made by hand. This is not like yes. a, a factory or a machine no, is doing they're all they're actual French macarons made by a human being, piped by hand, filled by hand, put together. Wow. But they freeze really well. They freeze for up to two months. So we started prepping for Valentine's Day as soon as Christmas was over this year. Oh, okay. Okay. And Christmas we started prepping for when Thanksgiving was over. Mm -hmm. But Thanksgiving, I had just moved into the storefront and I was not prepared for Thanksgiving. But making macarons, as far as preparing the ingredients, um, everything is by weight, by grams. And so I know to make one batch of this flavor yields me 120 macarons, and it takes this much. So I think I'm going to need six bags of almond flour this week, and we're going to probably go through about 120 eggs. And Yeah, okay. So there is a, a bit of a formula, mm. but you've had to kind of – a tweak I it guess. I'm sure for your for your particular needs and and business volume so I kind of guess <laughs> I don't keep good records I don't plan well so that might be the next hire right someone who's a good record keeper <laughs> uh, tax season is upon us yes yes indeed that can also be your best friend or your worst enemy so keep that in mind going forward I know how it's gonna be yeah yeah Not it's good. rough yeah yeah last year was not great for us. So um, I'm hoping we have better news this year. Speaking of that, um, you know, it's not always smooth sailing when you're running a business. So what are some of the obstacles that you've encountered running a business like this that may be specific to this particular in industry or, or just in general, any business owner? Anything stand out for you? Um, I was not prepared for all the food safety laws and food handler laws and inspections and that. I, I should have been better prepared. I should have read more. Um, 
Was it more than just the typical food handlers courses and managers courses that you have to take or? Yes, because we make our own product. Um, we always have to have a food manager on site, which is about an eight to 10 hour course. And mm-hmm. in addition I, to the food handlers. Yeah. Yes. And I pay my employees time to take the test and I pay for the test and help them with, I don't take the test for them, but they have questions and it's not clear. Um, there's online food handler courses and food safe, uh, food manager courses, but the information is contradictory a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you go to have an inspection, you're like, well, the course told me this, why did the course tell me this? And it's, and every County's health inspectors are different and hold different standards or they're you know they have different things they look for that and they don't doesn't prepare you for (laughs) they don't always know the exact rules too because everything refers back to the fda guidelines which is 800 pages long and i've taken the time to read some of it and it's actually contradictory to what the state of texas uh requires yes yeah yeah see this is yeah that's always the fun thing is when the the federal entity and the state entity do not match up (laughs) no and (laughs) it says the you know the texas food code says always refer back to the fda guidelines and the health inspectors don't always do that they've done it a certain way and that's the way they've always done it and this has always been right but you can't really argue with them. Right. They're going to give you the demerit or not, yeah. depending on how they, they feel. They don't call it. them demerits anymore. Oh, what are they called? Room for improvement. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's I mean, hilarious. I don't know why they needed to change they that. They don't do a demerit system anymore. Just, you know, they write whatever the violation was. Mm-hmm. I always looked at that in the newspaper as a kind of an indicator of, like, which places to avoid because they'd have, like, 14 or 25 or 31 demerits and you're like wow you know and now I just see them list well they didn't keep the so-and-so off the ground you know and you're like well I don't what is to the average customer that doesn't that mean tra- translate into <laughs> anything but when you've learned about it you're like oh crap they did that like, yeah I probably shouldn't eat there anymore yeah yeah I mean I think it's kind of it's one of those things where you kind of have to suspend disbelief if you want to ever eat out anywhere. I think because Pretty much, it's like yeah. you don't want to see how the sausage is made. Correct. I don't want to know what they're doing back there. <laughs> yeah. um, I want to live in my little fantasy of everything is okay. <laughs> agreed. Agreed. And that's what I do. I just try not to think about it when I go out to eat. So the health viol- the health um, manager courses and, and um, food handler things were the biggest challenge then because you weren't sure. That and, you know, the space I rented in the mall hadn't been used for two years and it was pretty much just a sink and an open space and the nitty gritty like installing equipment, plumbing issues, having to pull a toilet out and snake out the drain and stuff I was not prepared for. So if you rent a space in the mall and you, it it doesn't provide all the things that you need, are you allowed to bring in the things? Like an oven and a yes. refrigerator and all that I'm stuff? I'm responsible for bringing in my own equipment. Um, if I n- need the drain to be fixed, most of the times I'm going to have to pay for the drain to be fixed. Um, not a lot is covered with their maintenance. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard that as a complaint from people who rent there. Um, when you went to buy all of your commercial grade <clears throat> ovens and refrigerators and things like that, did you, um, was there like a, a secret baker's like auctions place that you went to like how does how does one do that you just get online and start shopping i for... went to webstaurant.com <laughs> okay. and ordered everything so i didn't have to interact with people i mean that's valid i would do that too yeah. maybe a little more expensive there's, there's, but uh there's a local place that sells some of it but a lot of what i use is specialty equipment mm-hmm. and it you really need an online retailer. I think the local place just does the bare bones basic stuff from mm-hmm. what I understand. So yeah. if you need anything specialized, it's going to have to be something you yeah. order online. And unfortunately, a lot of the equipment and, you know, disposable stuff that I use, it all has to be online. There's nowhere local to buy that. A lot of my ingredients have to come from online. Yeah. Well, in, in a business like this, what is your, do you have like a fun memory or a, a fun story or anecdote you'd like to share with all of us? This is why I do what I do, even when the days are can be challenging because, you know, the drain is clogged or, you know, you sold out too fast and, and people are standing in line wanting to buy. Like all the little things that can go wrong. What is the thing you think of? It's like, I this is why I love what I do. 
the customers really yeah. they keep me going like they're like i've never had anything like this i've seen it on tv nowhere around here sells it i can't believe we have this in lufkin texas like these are so fancy it's something new to them and they get to experience it for the first time and it's with me yeah. and i helped to bring them that experience that's what keeps me going like how impressed they are with how pretty they are and how they actually taste when you don't buy them out of the frozen section at walmart right. or tj maxx they taste infinitely better fresh i will say that yeah <laughs> yeah and just you know we have some family friends that live in houston and they have all of houston to choose from and they have an actual French bakery right beside them. And they made a trip down here to come to my little farmer's market stand Aww. and bought all these macarons. And she's like, hands down, you're better than anything I've had in Houston. We've been to Houston, Dallas, Austin, Chicago. It's the best ever. And we're so proud of you. That's so great to have like little cheerleaders on your side saying things like that, you know, because I imagine that. You know, baking isn't always the most glamorous job, you know, that someone could have. It's one of those it's things where you're It's not a Hallmark movie. <laughs> yeah, you're sweating in the back with, you know, everything all over you. and Breathing uh, in hands. powdered sugar, finding it in your ears <laughs> and every crevice in your body. Yeah. Right. It's, so that to have somebody tell you, you know, your stuff is better than French restaurants, like that's a pretty big deal. So I've had people that say, I've been to Paris. I've been to Disneyland. I've had them there and yours are better. And it... I try to be pretty modest and not get a big head and then just say thank you, but it makes me feel like I'm doing a good job yeah. to hear people say uh, that. Yeah, totally. And having, you know, great five-star reviews. While it's not necessarily the most important thing, it can definitely help, you know. <laughs> yeah. Do you keep like a big recipe book with all of your... I do. With all of your recipes and And it gets flavors written and... over about once a week we change something. <laughs> Are y'all always tweaking the recipe? Yes, always. Okay. And a lot of the times it has to do with the weather, the season, the humidity, what our ovens are doing that day, how our ingredients from the manufacturer have changed, and what we have to do to fix that. Temperatures, times, timing, drying them, not drying them, how we pipe them. It's So a lot of little nuances every single day. Yes. Okay. So you got to be on your, like, think on your feet mm -hmm. when it like you wake up on a day like today where it's rainy and humid and almost 70 degrees we're like turn the dehumidifier on turn all the fans on turn the ovens up five degrees wow the amount of experimentation and almost chemistry that you have to kind of deal with because baking is a lot more precise than just cooking you know you say it depends on what you're making you there's a lot of room to fail or well, mess sure. up with making a batch of cupcakes or chocolate chip cookies they're still going to taste like a chocolate chip cookie but with macarons yeah if you don't get it right you're going to get dry pancakes yeah yeah that's so like the the it's a little tricky i would think and then like you said there's um i don't i've never <clears throat> really made macarons but like i used to make these no bake cookies that had like um, chocolate and oatmeal and peanut butter you know i, I they have a name. I always just call them no-bake cookies. Mm -hmm. But I, I could, I either chose it like a day like this to try to make them, which anybody knows if you try to do it on a humid day, like they'll never set up, you know. And I, I tried different recipes and I tried different ways of doing it. And eventually I posted something on Facebook. This was years ago. And I was like, I'm having the worst time getting these things to set up. What am I doing wrong? And there were a couple people who commented and said, okay, here's what I have learned. Do this step at this point. And, you know, only add in this much or, or you know, all the little tweaks. Mm -hmm. And I did it and boom, it like completely changed the way they would, they they came out from that point on. So I always think that, you know, okay, you might eventually arrive and you find the solution, but you're saying that it changes from the seasons, from the days of the week to the weather. Absolutely. <laughs> so that is a lot of information to keep up with. That's why I was curious if you had a, a recipe book. We do. We have the base recipe that we, we use, but you know, temperatures and times and resting can all change based on external factors. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, uh, that makes it, you can't just put all of the ingredients together and expect to get a macaron right. out of it. Like it a sugar work. cookie or a chocolate chip cookie. You can yeah. kind of just toss it all in there, toss it in the oven. And maybe on a day like today, you just cook it for one minute less or something, but yeah, it's going to come out fine for the most part. Maybe a little burnt around the edges, but you can just, you can still eat it. You can still eat it. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> what are your, what's your favorite flavor? The espresso and the lemon, because they're less sweet. The lemon is very tart. 
The espresso is made with dark chocolate and doesn't have a buttercream in it, so it's less sweet than the rest of them. But they're both really strong flavors, and I love coffee and I love lemon. Yep. But that changes for everybody. My most popular sellers are going to be like red velvet, birthday cake, pistachio, cookies, and cream. And those are three of my least favorite flavors, actually, which is hilarious uh, because, you know, those are the common ones. And I like, uh, I do like coffee flavored things, um, but I like the citrusy flavors for something Mm -hmm. like this um, because they're not as sweet sometimes. And the older I have gotten, the less sweet I like things to be. And so um, my mother-in-law actually brought um, some of your macarons, I think, up here to work one day. And she was like, I just went to this place in the mall and she's selling these macaron cookies and you guys have got to try them. And I had been in my office and I'd come over here to talk to Megan about something. And I was like, oh, all right. You know, and she had had like, I think she got a dozen and they were like three or four flavors in this like sampler pack or something. Mm-hmm. And I've tried the coffee. I really like, yeah, I like the coffee. She likes coffee flavored things. And so I tried the coffee one too. And I was like, wow, this is really good. I mean, it tastes like I'm drinking a coffee but it was it was sweet you mm-hmm. know I wasn't expecting it you know you think coffee not a sweet flavor you know so my my brain was like whoa I had to adjust for a second but it was really good and I was like Thank okay you. I need to go get some of those and then I think I had a I think Megan bought some and brought them over to the house and I had a lemon or blueberry one something like that I think it was lemon blueberry lemonade is a new flavor that we currently it wouldn't have, have been that one then because I think that this was a while back lemon. yeah it was lemon and I was like ooh. This is my favorite one, I think, so far. And I like chocolate, too. But I would imagine if it were me making them, I I would gravitate towards the flavors I liked. And that's not really how you should run a business because, like, you know, what's what's popular? (laughs) Maybe things I don't particularly care for. But that might be good because if you're sitting there eating them all day long, you probably want to not. I haven't had a macaron in three and a half months. Oh, wow. Sick of them already, huh? (laughs) When you have to make them... You don't enjoy eating them so much. I would imagine. Yeah. So when it starts out as a hobby <clears throat> and you turn it into a job, because that's kind of how I was, I was a professional photographer for 15 years and um, it started out as a hot, well, started out as my college degree and then sort of like a, a hobby because people are like, oh, these pictures you took in college were so great. You should do this. And then, you know, I had small children, so it was a, a really mom friendly kind of job to have. And then it became, you know, a career and, um, now I don't take pictures at all. It sucks the fun <laughs> right out of it. It does. People are like, do, you know, find something you love and you'll never work another day in your life. And I just look at them and go, Baloney. you'll never work harder in your life when you do something that you love. And the problem that I, I ran into is that I, I being a control person, um, did not seek out help where I needed it to, it to kind of alleviate some of the overload and the burnout that I experienced and so I sort of uh, retired from photography about two or three years ago and um people are like you'll go back one day and I'm just like oh I don't think I could do it for a job because you burned yourself all the way out I really did Uh, I should have stopped sooner maybe and 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 then it wouldn't have been as big of a deal but that's what I worry about. Like, when is the point going to happen where I just can't do it anymore? I can't face it. I can't. And go I to think work. if you if you start good habits now, because that's one of the things I didn't do early enough on, is have some boundaries. You know, answering emails at all times of day and night, things like that. And I've gotten to a place now in my life. You know, I'm 43 almost, um, where I've learned no means no. It's a complete sentence. You don't have to justify mm-hmm. anything. And I'm going to keep normal business hours. Just because I'm in business for myself doesn't mean that I have to answer emails at 6 a.m. or midnight, 8 to 5, unless there's this, an extenuating circumstance, you know, but, things like that. Again, you're fighting with the internet, modern technology, and people wanting an answer right now, right now, right now. And then if you message them 30 minutes too late, they're like, mm, never I've already mind. found somebody. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you, You've there got to balance that. that. But then you have to wonder, you know, if I had – maybe put some of those boundaries in place much earlier on in my photography career would I have burnt out as as soon because it was just like I was always trying to please people and make sure that their wishes and and things were accommodated and I was a wedding photographer so that added a whole other level of stress and you know constant demand on my time and attention because you know most of these weddings I was doing their engagement pictures and their bridal pictures and like a bridal shower party and you know, all these things. And it was, it it gets to be a lot. So I would say 
to hopefully alleviate some of that burnout is to maybe distribute some of those tasks to some of the your employees, but then also sort of set up some boundaries to be like, I don't have to be on call 24 seven. And it sounds like you guys are successful enough that you don't necessarily, if you, if somebody messages you and you get back to them in 30 minutes and they're already like, never mind, you didn't want them as a client. Anyway. Correct. They were, their expectations were too high of me and I'm not going to be able to please them. Right. And I think it's reasonable to go 24 hours. You know, if I, if I message someone, if I were to message your business and I didn't receive a response until tomorrow at this time, that to me is completely reasonable. But then I've been in that position. And so I know. And I know everybody's Some people like that. don't take your viewpoint. But right. Yes. Yeah. No, I know. I know. I mean, I imagine, it, especially when you, I, I, I've seen that you guys do cakes and things like that. I try not to. <laughs> um, and that adds a whole other you know, when they want a custom order, you know, people message you, well, you do this custom flavor, bubblegum, cotton candy, pink, you know, and you're like, uh, and, and that's the thing that, you know, <laughs> I've had to set boundaries. Like we can't do a custom color and flavor unless you're ordering 50 of them now, because a batch makes a hundred of them. And if you want a bubblegum mint chocolate chip and you want me to make 12 of them, I'm not going to be able to sell those Rest other you know 84 macarons nobody's gonna and you buy learn that. that lesson the hard way you do and, and so it's little things like that along the way that you're you kind of go okay well if you want this custom flavor or color you have to have this many um, and if you wanted you know hand-painted cartoons on them it's going to be this much extra and that's because it's going to take me 10 hours to sit down and hand paint every single one of these front and back mm -hmm. and you're going to eat them they're little works of art is how I view it. So when someone says, well, nobody's going to pay $2 for that. I, I've seen how much work. I, one of my, like my, like my favorite thing to do, the to just zone out to, is to watch people decorate sugar cookies with royal mm -hmm. icing. I don't know why I'm so mesmerized by that. Or piping out things like yeah, macaron batter. Yeah, it's to batter. see it come together. And it's so pretty, but it's a lot of work. I mean, they'll work on that one cookie doing all the intricate, you know, design on it for, you know, 15, 20 minutes. And it's, you're going to eat it. And then you're going to, somebody's going to eat that later. And, and it's they're like, going to poop it out. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, I, you know, they charge $10 for that cookie. I, they totally should. Like it took and some forever. some people want that. Some, some people, the aesthetic is more important than the actual fact that it's food that you're going to eat, mm -hmm. you know? Because it's pretty to look at. Yep. And, and the colors are pretty and all those things. Yep. Um, what would you what would you say that this business has taught you the most about yourself? Because you know you, you said I fly by the seat of my pants, but has it taught you to be a little bit more of a planner? Has it taught not you not yet? <laughs> it's going to happen one day. There's going to be a fire that I can't put out today, and <clears throat> I'm going to you know get into planning. But um, it's helped me learn to let go and let other people help. I think that's and give me confidence that I, if I really want to do something, I can do it. Yeah. That's a good lesson to learn early on. Getting the people to come help you because you're just one person and you can't bake all the things and take all the orders and talk to the customers. You're and, just going to hurt your body trying to yeah. do that. And yeah. I've had to let go. Yeah. And, and t to people, you know, like us who maybe are more perfectionist or more hands-on with every aspect of their business, that can be a really, really hard thing to do. Um, I know it was for me and probably why the reason I'm not doing photography anymore. But uh, I think if you can learn that lesson and it's scary in the moment, but overall in the long run, if you get a good enough team in place, that's probably the best way to go. And the people that you have hired on to help you, you have to trust that you pick the right people and that they're doing and representing their, your business the same way you would. You know? I really like all of my coworkers and I'm really happy with everyone I work with right now. I don't know how I ended up with great people, but I did. I'm very lucky. Great people attract great people is what I think. So <laughs> there you go. Uh, recipe for success right there. Um, what advice would you give to other people who are starting a business, either in this industry or just randomly, any any business? It's going to be really hard in the beginning. Yeah. Um, you're probably going to get close to going broke, but I think it's really important that if you have to hire people, pay people a decent wage, mm -hmm. pay people a fair wage, and treat them with respect. And give them something to invest in. Because if you're treating them with respect and giving them a giving a wage. give them a place they enjoy to come to work with, yeah. and it makes things a lot less difficult if you treat your employees with kindness and. I think fairness. we're hearing that a lot in 
current culture, you know, oh, there's a worker shortage. People don't want to work. They're lazy. No, I think people realized over the COVID, you know, lockdown and just the last couple of years, they're not going to accept working in toxic work environments or working for, you know, peanuts, basically. I think anybody can get a job anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. They don't have to stay to you. They're not tied to you. They don't owe you anything. Yeah. So paying people what they're worth and providing a, a good, you know, workspace and a work environment that people want to be, participate in, I think. Treat them fairly. Treat them how you'd want to be treated if you worked there, if you weren't the boss. Right. Yeah. There's a there's a guy that we all kind of watch. His name is Gary <clears throat> B. And he says, your employees don't work for you. You work for them, basically. So, yes, you may own the business, but you have hired all these people to come in and do this job. And you were sort of their steward in a way so yeah I think that's that's good advice to have um when you were starting your business you said Michelle was kind of your mentor was there any advice she gave or other people in your Facebook group that um really helped you kind of get over those hurdles in the beginning it's hard to think of an example when (laughs) I put you on the spot I'm sorry Um, (laughs) no they're just all really supportive and you know even if I thought the cookies that I were making looked like junk. They gave positive reinforcement. These are the things you can change. This is, you know, next time you try it, try this. Mm-hmm. Just so just really that, helpful. having that support sounding board. No negativity, no picking on people. What part of the internet are you on? <laughs> well, it's Facebook groups, but um, they have really strict rules and moderators and they don't tolerate ne- the negativity in the group. So yeah. that helps. I mean, I think that's, that's that's a really hard thing for some people, especially starting out, you know, joining a group, a support group for whatever that, you know, it's very nerve wracking to be a person to put yourself out there and say, I need help with this. And this is what I made. And what do you all think? And then to not have them just completely, you know, all on it and, yeah. and give you more positive encouragement. Um, I think we need more places in, in the world like that and in spaces. And I'm glad you were able to find one because it's obviously helped you along. And so that's good. So find those places. Uh, that are going to give you um, constructive criticism and tips and tricks on how to do better, you know, um, whatever your industry may be, I feel like is a, a good way to go there. What do you What do you guys have planned for the future? I mean, you said earlier on in the interview that you guys were maybe going to branch out into food, I'm guessing savory foods. Yes. What, uh, what would that look like maybe? Well, my shop used to be a pretzel shop and I get people every day asking me for pretzels. So I'm <laughs> thinking about maybe it's time to give in. And do pretzels. And do pretzels. You could do sweet and savory pretzels. I could. I mean, you've already got <laughs> macarons, so I don't know why you yeah. would do the sweet, but yeah. It's okay. a, it's a balance. I, you know, I'm just take it a little bit at a time, introduce little things at a time. We try to do one new flavor of macaron a week, and we're going to try to introduce pretzels and maybe pretzel dogs and bagels. Okay. And then grow from there as the need arises. Yeah. I mean, that's really smart because scaling smaller and not just go, okay, well, we've decided we're going to add an entire lunch menu. And drop like 15 grand on equipment to do that, not knowing if it's going to work out or not. Right. And it's a lost investment if you do. You know, you could always eventually, if the pretzel and bagel thing works out, branch into sandwiches if you wanted to or whatever. We do actually offer sandwiches already. Oh. I would really love to turn it into a brunch place and not just a bakery, but there's no room for me to expand currently in the mall without completely moving to a different different. part of the mall. Have have you looked at other spaces outside of the mall environment? Yes. Found anything you like? (laughs) I I worry because the mall gets a lot of foot traffic. And most other places don't. You know, there's the little spot over in front of the Home Depot where all the other restaurants are that's a little strip mall that there's nothing left there. Right. But the rent is... Everything goes to die, pretty much. That's like the kiss of death for you. The (laughs) rents are incredibly high. Yeah. And they'd rather keep the business, the, the real estate unoccupied than decrease the rent right it's a tax write-off for them so yeah there's no incentive to rent right downtown um but then you might be limited on space and and parking and things like Mm -hmm. that so yeah i mean i I do think the mall is a pretty good location when you want just a random swath of the demographic of the town you live in and during like i do really well during the holidays and during the holidays you can't move in the mall it's just crazy we couldn't keep up with it yeah 
Definitely. So besides adding maybe some savory things to your menu, what else do you guys want to do? Just survive that. Just keep up. (laughs) (laughs) Just keep up. Maybe hire another employee. I am do an intern program. Looking, I have an interview scheduled for tomorrow. So oh, fun! Yeah, yeah, lots of things coming up for you guys. Yeah. Um, well, why don't you tell everybody where they can find you on social media and your physical location? On Instagram and on Facebook, I'm Melody's Macarons. On TikTok, I'm Melody's Macarons. I'm in the Lufkin Mall. That's 4600 South Medford Drive. I'm across from Hibbet Sports on the Old Sears side. Nice. Working on a website. It's not ready yet. Hope to have it soon. <laughs> Very good. Uh, will people be able to order online? That's something we're going to have to work out because of how delicate they are. There is not a great or inexpensive way to ship them. Mm-hmm. I've ordered from several other companies to figure out what they do to get their macarons safely delivered because they require refrigeration. They are super delicate. All of the packaging made... <clears throat> preformed plastic packaging I hate plastic packaging by the way and yeah. would love to not have to use it because it's terrible for the environment but they're made for standard macarons which are about an inch around and mine are close to two inches that make mine a lot bigger mm-hmm. and they're uh, thicker as well so I would have to order a custom yeah. gotcha yeah well the- one day that could be like a five-year plan uh, <laughs> the next 18 months nice okay good deal we've been working on it trying to figure things out a lot of exciting things going on so well i'm I'm so glad to have you here and for you to come by on your one day off i use quotation marks (laughs) uh to come and tell us all about what's going on with you guys over at melody's macarons um so thanks melody for coming and tell us for sure thanks for having me guys yeah so uh you guys check us out uh we'll have a new episode for you in a few weeks uh but in the meantime enjoy this one and we'll see you next time Do you have a story to tell? We want to hear it. If you'd like to be a guest on our podcast and share your story, contact us on our website at painpoints.com or any of the social media linked on our website. Be sure to subscribe and follow us on either Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or YouTube. We'd appreciate a review, a like, or a comment to let us know what you think. You can find all of our podcasts linked on our website under the podcast tab. Once again, thanks for joining us, and we want to wish everybody a wonderful day.